morning again, thank you, choir. A lot of labor involved there. If you have your Bible this morning, Matthew uh, chapter 1, verse 21. And uh, I'm going to preach a Christmas message this morning. And uh, we're here this morning because of one name. Uh, the name of Jesus. And the Bible says His name is above every name that's ever been given. His name is above every name that's ever been of those in heaven or on the earth or under the earth. And the Bible also declares that one day, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. That's the reason for this season. We're not gathered here today because of some political name. Uh, we're not gathered here today because of some sports figure, their famous name. We're not gathered today because of some Hollywood name or some other religious name. We're here because of one name this morning, the name of Jesus. One person, born a virgin, the Son of God, we preach His name. Our mouths should be filled with His name. Because the Bible again says, no man, no woman comes to God but through Him. I want to preach this morning. On the name of Jesus, Matthew 1, verse 21. The angel of the Lord is speaking to Joseph. And he says these words. She shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. Father, we come this morning by the blood, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I pray, God, your anointing, your conviction, your presence, God, fill this place. Save the lost, God. Redeem the brokenhearted. Work miracles today in your people. I pray in Jesus' name. It's interesting to me who was first given the name of Jesus. The very first person that would be connected to his name. The very first that would speak his name. Joseph is the first human being God is going to reveal the name of his son. He's a carpenter. He's a working man. He's a common man. He's an unknown man by and large at this time. If you would have saw his clothes, he wouldn't have impressed you. He shook his hand. He was probably callous. Maybe even sawdust in his hair. Maybe a tools hanging or a tool hanging from his belt. Notice the first man that is revealed the name of Jesus to is not a prince. He's not a priest. He's not a warrior. There's no wealth recognized around him. He has no titles. He's not famous. He's a carpenter. He's a hard-working, common man. 
as I alluded to, few would have even known his name. He doesn't have much in the way of material world. But we mentioned as a boy, I could see my dad working in the fields, plowing in those days with the team of horses. I would run to him with a fruit jar full of water from the well, and his clothes would just be drenched and faded with years of sweat and labor. In my mind, Joseph looks something like that. He wouldn't have impressed the world to look at him. Maybe you see yourself this morning in Joseph. And not only is he this kind of man, he's from a no-name place. The birthplace. The course of a little town of Bethlehem. This is not a Mecca. This is not a major city. It's not a cultural city like in Greece or some famous city like Rome. He's raised in Nazareth. John 1.46, Nathaniel says, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That's where some of you came from. Can any good thing come out of that neighborhood? And yet, this is the first person that God says, I'm going to reveal the name of my son to you. You wouldn't expect much, perhaps, to come out of this place. Not only that, Mary, the mother, she's a common handmaiden. When she sings her song of praise to God in front of her cousin Elizabeth, Luke 1, 48, he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. What's she saying to God? How in the world did you choose it? Thank you. Verse 52 of that song, he put down the mighty from their thrones and he exalted the lowly. She's simply a common girl, clean living, a virgin. Luke 1, 49, For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Lord, I can't believe. Are you, are you sure? I don't see how I qualify. You sure there's not some kind of mistake? Maybe that's you. You're sitting here this morning and Jesus has revealed himself to you. You're a miracle. Just like she's going to birth a miracle. And you wonder why God, why out of this time. I believe God is making a statement. I want my son to always be connected with the common people. The common people shall be his people. Don't disqualify yourself from being used with God because of maybe your history or your problems, your family tree. He said, these are the people that I want to speak my name. In our text, you shall call his name Jesus. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 1.26, You see your calling, brother, not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. God has chosen the foolish things to confound the wise, the weak things to confound the mighty and the despised. Added to all of this, Joseph is a trouble man. No doubt he's confused. He's mentally, emotionally tormented. He's prepared to marry this young girl. There's been conversation, the family plans, all of these things up. And now all of a sudden it's not turned out the way he expected or planned. 
without he had great expectations. We just had a number of weddings here. You see the joy, the excitement. Uh, but Mary, his wife, she was a child. And he knew it wasn't me. And she says, it's God's child. Conceived by the Holy Spirit. That could bring a bit of confusion. Try to explain that to your parents. That could bring some mental torment and anguish. What do you do with that? It's never been heard of before or since. Your friends, are they going to believe that story? Talk about a mental migraine. Your head spinning. The devil's whispering. And people, the perplexity, the fear, the shock, the questions, the disappointment perhaps. And then God shows up to this kind of man who's going through these kind of issues. And he says, I'm going to give you a name, Joseph. And there's no name like this name. This name will remove all fear and confusion and torment. Verse 20, the preceding verse, Joseph, son of David, Fear not. Listen, I'm going to give you a name that will wipe away fear. Do not be afraid to take you wherever you like, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And the child, you shall call his name Jesus. Is that you, this morning? You're here, you're told him all. Life, life can spin out of control. You can have all kinds of plans and dreams and many times when you're young, maybe late teens, early teens or whatever, and you've got this plan and you, you've got this, this expectation and somewhere along the way everything just explodes. I was really 29 years old. My whole world exploded, really out of craziness. Our marriage was over. I was living in guilt and shame and promises I had made to God that I could not keep. And I know, Joseph, there's no record of alcohol and drugs in that, but can you imagine how you're trying to process all of this? And God shows up. I'm going to give you a name. I'm going to give you a name that's above every name. That's every name. I'm going to give you a name that will drive out fear and confusion. I want you to be the first to speak this name. Jesus. Okay. You're here this morning, you've got a lot of mess going on. You'd be amazed if you just begin to speak that name. The name of Jesus. Maybe your life has come unglued. Will you speak his name? We speak so many names in life. Listen to Jesus. My favorite verses, Luke 4, 18, 19. He said, this is why I came. This is why I was born. We're talking about the birth of Christ. He said, this is why I was born, to preach the gospel to the poor. I came to bind up the brokenhearted. I came to proclaim liberty to the captive. Is that you? 
Life's sin always captures you in one form or another. Everyone's not addicted to some kind of drug from the street, but you can be addicted to your past that torments you. You can be addicted to your guilt and shame, uh, your emotions that are rogue and vile. You can be addicted to rebellion. Uh, you can be addicted to porn and lust and perversion. Uh, he said, I want to give sight where you're blind. One of the marks of sin, it blinds you. It blinds you. I want to open prison doors to those who are bound. And I want to preach a gospel that you're accepted. Is that you? Is that you where you're at this morning? Pain, brokenness, the bondage, trying to live with yourself can be a struggle. Do you speak his name? The name Jesus. He said, I want you to call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. God says, I'm going to name him, but I want you to call him. This is his first name. It's his personal name, Jesus. Uh, think about your name. There's nothing more identifying than your name. When you're born, there's a name put on your birth certificate. Many people, until recently, when you die, that name is put on your tombstone. Your name identifies you. And we know Jesus. He had many titles. King of kings and Lord of lords. The great I am. Jesus the Christ. The Son of God. The Son of Man. The Messiah. Emmanuel God with us. But this is His first name. This is a personal name. And if you don't know Him by this name. You don't know Him. You may know about Him. You may have some knowledge of Him. You may even admire Him. You may even speak about Him, sing choruses about Him. But if you don't know Him by this name, you don't know Him. The name Jesus means Savior. The one who saves His people from their sins. Preach it. Is this your personal testimony? I know Jesus because He saved me from myself. He saved me from my insanity. He saved me from all my craziness. He saved me from my, my bad decisions and my bondage. He saved me from myself. Is that your testimony? It's how you know him best. He was Jesus in the manger. He was Jesus on the cross. And he was Jesus at the empty tomb. In the Hebrew, Jesus is the name of the Greek. In the Hebrew, and I'm closing, the same Hebrew word is Joshua. He was the type of Jesus. He saved his people, if you're a student of the Bible, he saved them from the wilderness, the barren, the, the places of life where nothing grows and there's no hope. Took them out of the wilderness. He defeated the enemies, the wall cities and the giants, the Philistines. Jesus in the New Testament saves you also from the wilderness, the wilderness of sin. Wandering, 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 always some new thing, some new place, tried this, tried that. And always in that wilderness they went in a circle. 
Joshua saved Israel, the Jews, from the wilderness and defeated giants. Jesus also defeats giants. Generational curses that track families. Uh, family curses. Uh, you look at some of your ancestors. You look at your older brother. You look at grandparents. You look at and you think, my Lord, uh, it's a reflection of me and my mess. Uh, Joshua was the savior of the Jews. Jesus was the savior of you and I. Yes, come on now. He not only saved them from the wilderness, and, and we know Joshua took them into an inheritance. Of, it said, Every man will sit under his own tree and drink from his own well, a place of peace and security. But I'm talking about a peace that passes understanding. I'm talking about you can be saved and born again. And it's not just a peace here in this life, but it's eternal heritage. It's heaven life. It's a whole waiting for you. That is far beyond what Joshua ever accomplished. Are you living in a personal relationship with Jesus? The Bible says not just like Joshua who defeated some armies and some tribes of people, but Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. Show me another name that even wants to go there. Death? Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, brave, brave, where's the sting and the victory? He defeated death, hell, and the grave. Savior. He shall save his people. From this, not God's people. If we talked about God's people, we'd have to say the Jews. But he says, when you're saved, you're called by my name. I kept those, Father, that you've given to me. You want saving? You want to be saved? You have to come to the place where you know Him. To be saved, you have to recognize and realize what I'm living and how I'm living is not working. I need saving. I need to know Jesus personally, not just religion, not just come and be a spectator, not just sing a chorus, not just quote, but I need to know Him personally. My first connection to Jesus was not through any goodness. And neither was yours. Your first connection with Jesus wasn't because of accomplishments. Wasn't because of abilities. You could be sitting here from any number of walks of life. But your first connection with Jesus was through your mistakes and your sin and your brokenness and your emptiness just like this man. Your guilt, my shame, my lostness drove me to him. That made the connection. What about you? His name means nothing to you if you do not know him as Savior. Means nothing. Because that's his first and personal name. Have you ever known him? Talk about with this personal. It's not just church. I gave him the name, God said, and I want you to speak it. I want you to call it. I want to 
want to be personal to you. It's Jesus. And the reason I gave him that name, because that name means he is going to save his people from their sin. We have all sinned, the Bible says, and fallen short of the glory of God. None are righteous, not one. Not one. Not one. Do you know him? Do you know him personally? Or you just kind of wake at him once in a while? See these sports figures? I think the man upstairs. Well, you better know more than just think of the man upstairs. It has to be personal. You have to be born again. Except the man is born again, the woman is born again. They'll never, ever, ever see this Jesus. They'll never see the kingdom. He's the king of kings of his kingdom. Will you let him save you this morning? Will you come to him just like you? No, no. Hard to get saved if you're proud. Almost impossible, if not impossible. Because he resists the proud. But he offers grace to the whole. That's why I was born. That's what Christmas is all about. And there's a lot of activities going to happen in the next few days. But that's why we're here. And that's what it's about. Is that true of you? Is that true of you? You say, oh, and the devil will slap you right now. Slap you with your past. Slap you, somebody hurt you, somebody said this, something happened, some history at church or etc. Maybe you're tormented. Counsel people constantly anymore. It seems like they can't sleep. Drugs to wake up, drugs to go to sleep. They can't sleep, they can't sleep, they can't sleep. Because of torment. But he came to a tormented man, a common man, and said, I want to know you. I want to live in your house. I want to have a relationship. And that is the miracle of Christmas. I ask you to bow your head with me this morning. Lord, in this place, God, be careful of the Oh, Lord Jesus, God, send your conviction. Send your love and mercy. I pray, Lord. Start faith. You're here this morning before anything else. And is that you? Would you stop for a moment and be honest? Maybe I, maybe, maybe I, maybe I do need Jesus. I tried this and it didn't work. I tried that and it got worse. Oh, I walked down this road and I thought this relationship and spun out of control. One prayer, one prayer, one prayer. One prayer. One simple prayer can change your whole world because it changes you. Jesus is into the life-changing business. One prayer, you can start over. You can be born again. You can be forgiven. One prayer. One very good prayer. Simple prayer. I pray a prayer a child will pray in a minute. 
and he heard it. He was born a virgin, died cruelly on the cross, shed his blood, innocent, but he paid the price on the cross for our sins. That's how he saves us. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. You're here this morning. You say, Pastor, that's what I need. I need Jesus. I need a miracle. I need to know Him personally. I need to be forgiven. I got things in my life that eat me alive. I need to be free. That's you this morning. Heads are bowed. You lift your hand and say, That's me. I need prayer. I need prayer. Just slip it up, slip it up, slip it up. That's me, Pastor. That's me. I need. I see your hand. God bless you, dear. Thank you for your honesty. You may put it down. Who else? How many other ones? You lift it up and say, that's me, that's me, that's me. I'm not right with God. I know I'm not. Nobody has to tell me. I need to come home. Who else? Who else? That's me. That's me. I see your hand. God bless you. Thank you, dear. Thank you for your honesty. God's moving on people. Who else? Who else? How many more? That's me. That's me. Just slip it up. Slip it up. God's got a miracle waiting for you. That's me. Who else? Who else? Who else? Backslider. He wants a new God, but you walk away. Who else? You lift your hand. That's me. That's me. I need to come home. I see this hand. I see that hand. God bless you. Thank you. Who else? Who else? Who else? Just lift it up that I can see it. Who else? I see your hand in the back. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? That's me. That's me. That's me. I need to pray. Who else? You have God. The love of God. God's moving on people. Who else? All of you lifted your hand. Would you lift it up one more time? Just lift it up and hold it. Your hand's lifted. Would you lift your eyes and look at me? Sincere with God. Sincere with God. I believe you are. You're sincere with God. Sincere with God. In the back, sincere with God. I want all of you with your hands lifted. I want you to lift out of your seat. In the back, back there. I want you to come. Someone's going to come and pray with you. Over here, people are coming. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Someone come pray with me. In the back, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's personal. It's so personal. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm about to offer you a gift today. Jason gave a great altar call. In the 180 Saturday night, talking about the greatest gift, the, the only gift he ever tape. remembers was the gift of Jesus. You all want to come? I want to open these altars. You want to come and find a place to pray. You want to come and talk to God. Personal, personal and up to date. Personal and up to date. Pass to the right. Oh yeah. Just like I'll bring pass to the right. Yes. Personal and present in the name of Jesus. You can come to church and somewhere along the way you forget that name or it becomes distant. No longer means what it used to mean. You got your seat, you may be seated. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Oh, my gosh.
believe in your heart, God brings you from the dead, you'll be saved. But with the heart you believe, but with the mouth confession is made on the salvation. I'm going to ask you, church, to help me pray this prayer out loud. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I've sinned. I've done things wrong. I've hurt other people. My sin has hurt me. I believe this morning in Jesus Christ. You're God's only son. You died for me. You said, shed your blood for my sin. That I can be forgiven. I ask you, Lord, right now, forgive me for the mess I've made. I'm asking you, Lord, to save me from myself. God, I break the curse of sin and generations. By your grace and mercy, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. Jesus, amen. Would you stand and give God praise?